I'm Danny Mando, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here tonight to a, another Federation of Jewish Men's Club Sports webinar. This is truly a, a unique guest that we have, and we're very, very excited. So I'm going to turn it over to my partner, David Kravitz, and Dave's going to give you his introductory speech. David, hit it. But David, David, you have to take yourself off mute because we probably aren't that good at lip syncing. There you, no, there you go. Now you're good. Okay, let's try it again. I'm not good at lip syncing. This is true. Okay. Um, well, we have a good one for you tonight. Hello and welcome to Sports Affinity Webinar presented by the Federation of Jewish Men's Clubs. FJMC is the parent organization of over 200 conservative men's clubs around the world. FJMC has presented more than 100 webinars since the pandemic began. We work hard to provide value to our members and to the Jewish community in general. For example, FJMC offers you an opportunity to express yourselves to participating in and leading activities that are most important to you. So I'm Dave Kravitz with my co-chair, co Danny Mandel. We work together very well. He's a phenomenal guy to work with, actually an absolute pleasure. Um, we'll, we'll be uh, hosting tonight. We're going to mute everyone so you can enjoy. Um, We'll be unmuting after the presenter's remarks so we can take questions. The questions will be from chat. Um, if you are enjoying our webinars, please validate your support with a contribution to FJMC by going to fjmc.org slash donate. I'll put that link on chat, click on in honor of, and then select affinity groups or webinar. So now I'm going to introduce our speaker, Rabbi Yuri Foreman. You know, when I, when I, um, Find out about what people do and what they've done in their lives. It, it's impressive. What Rabbi Foreman has done is, is really incredible. Um, I could go on for a long, long time. I'm just going to give you the highlights of Rabbi Foreman's life because he is absolutely phenomenal. One of the best, one of the best people we've ever had speak here. So here we go. Rabbi Yuri Foreman was born in Gomel, Belarus. He immigrated with his family to Israel. In Israel, he became an amateur boxer and won three national championships. He moved to the United States to become a professional boxer. During his amateur career, he won the New York Golden Gloves. On November 14th, 2009, he became the new WBA super welterweight champion and Israel's first WBA champion. He began teaching boxing classes in the famous Gleason's Gym in Brooklyn, New York in 2020. He has appeared numerous times in nationally televised fights on ESPN, Showtime, HBO, and Versus, in talk shows such as Jimmy Kimmel Live. He also pursued, pursued Jewish religious studies during his boxing career. In 2014, was ordained as a Orthodox rabbi. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you Rabbi Yuri Foreman. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, introduction. You actually, uh, you actually, uh, I think that's it. There's nothing to say here. <laughs> um, so. Um, okay, well, thank you very much. It was really thank you for speaking. <laughs> Hasta la vista. Yeah. Um, so, uh, okay, where should I start? Where should I start? Since the beginning? I, um, all right, so a um, little bit briefly, I'll, uh, I'll just kind of browse through um, some topics, not topics, some highlights. Um, born in Soviet Union, uh, 1980, um, around seven years old. Um, one of the great things, uh, one of the few great things about Soviet Union was uh, a very uh, a heavy emphasis on, on education, sport and education. Um, and uh, and uh, when I was seven, um, they would start picking kids pretty much from uh, if they had any kind of a potential. Um, and uh, everything was free, it was uh, state paid for it. Um, and uh, my parents uh, initially first sent me to being a swimmer. And clearly, uh, since you already introduction, since the introduction, uh, my 
my swimming career sank <laughs> to the bottom. <laughs> so uh, I got bullied a couple of times um, in a swimming pool and uh, came with a big black eye. Um, I was seven again and uh, my mom just, you know, all right, so now we're gonna take you somewhere else. And she took me to boxing gym. She had a, uh, a old classmate who was a, a boxing trainer. And um, I could say it was a love of first sight as soon as I stepped into a boxing gym. You know, this, I don't know how many of you have uh, been in boxing gym. I'm sure all of you have seen Rocky, music, uh, Rocky, Rocky movies and Rocky music. Um, and uh, that, that was the environment. That was the little, uh, there was kind of, unforgettable uh, sounds effect, you know, speed bag, the heavy bag, the smell, very distinct and other sports. Uh, it was stinky, yes, but it was, it was uh, kind of amazing uh, to see a huge man fighting and et cetera. And, uh, and I started training, I started training. And um, I always, um, always been kind of saying to everyone, um, kids, kids, teenagers, young adults and adults um, always have to have a goal in life and a dream. It's very important, it's healthy. Um, um, I have, I, I think retrospectively speaking, I, I was, um, I had advantage over my peers, my age, um, um, because already since I was seven, seven and a half or eight, I was already, I knew what I want to be. I knew what I want to do in my life. Um, um, I, I wanted to be a boxer. And that was, uh, that was everyday kind of a thought, the, the, the thought, the thinking and, and my imagination. And, uh, and once, once they show uh, Mike Tyson fight, first time, First time the show in Soviet Union, the Mike Tyson fight was he was fighting um, the Canadian heavyweight uh, Razor Donovan Ruddock, and the fight was amazing. You know, I, I never seen anything like that. And uh, from that fight, I I knew that's it. Boxing is my way. <laughs> so my um, my parents not religious. By no means, uh, Soviet Union. It's it's uh, outlawed almost. Um, yeah, unless if you wanted to practice any kind of a Judaism, you had to do it secretly, um, not in public. And my parents, they were far from uh, from any kind of a source of spirituality. Uh, it was not in our house, and <clears throat> and. Um, I know my dad was telling me stories that when he had fights, he was beaten up uh, quite a few times um, because he was Jewish or, you know, other reasons. <laughs> um, and, but it never, never really, uh, it never been uh, some kind of a, uh, I never brought up as, as Jewish. I didn't know what it is. And, uh, um, right before uh, collapse of Soviet Union, my parents decided to immigrate to Israel for uh, greener pastures, I think. Um, and it was exciting as I was a kid, you know, oh, we're traveling, great. Um, so we came uh, to Israel in 91 and uh, we settled in the north city of Haifa. And um, um, it was back to, uh, not back, it was a new experience. Besides beautiful country, besides a very hot climate, uh, my parents also start their new journey as being immigrants. I was 11, so my parents were 30 years old at that time. And uh, it's a new, new beginning for them and uh, a lot of working. They were in the beginning had to get uh, jobs like in every, uh, Mm, immigrants does, you know, cleaning offices, etc. And uh, usually after the school, I used to take a bus and then going and help them to clean offices. So, um, and uh, it was interesting actually, 
in uh, in nineties, in the beginning of nine, 91, um, there was no boxing gym in Haifa, uh, which is weird. Uh, I keep saying it as a joke. Um, if anybody who would look at the, the map of Israel and uh, look the surrounding area, there's not a lot of friends. <laughs> and, uh, and it would make sense, it would make, uh, I think, logical sense um, that Israel would be, there would be boxing gyms everywhere, you know, or martial arts or whatever. And there was no boxing gym. Uh, two main sports I remember, it was, and probably still is, uh, still are is, is basket, basketball and, uh, and soccer and um, soccer is another story <laughs> basketball day okay um, um, so in the beginning I remember we always been short on the money I'm not gonna say uh, the usual immigrant uh, song <laughs> um, uh, but my parents kind of scrambled some money and kind of gave me an opportunity to go to the gym. Um, the nearest gym I remember <clears throat> was at least at that time, um, it's the outskirts of uh, city of Haifa. It was an Arab gym and I used to travel there. And, uh, and it's interesting, Arabs had beautiful gyms, um, a, lot of, a lot of equipment, and uh, I used to train with them. Um, in the beginning, in the beginning, um, I remember my first training. Um, I came. Uh, you guys seen um, Rocky, Rocket Three? You remember the movies, Rocket Three? So when uh, when Apollo Creed, if you don't know, um, if you didn't see the movie Rocky, I highly encourage you. <laughs> um, um, there is a part when. Apollo Creed, his uh, former nemesis, taking to uh, gym and LA, and uh, he goes down to the basement. And as soon as they enter, and Rocky Balboa is the only white guy, and everybody stop and they're looking, and they uh, and Apollo Creed tells, "Hey, Rock, look at their eyes. You see, you see their eyes. It's an eye of a tiger. Eye of an uh, eye of a tiger." Um, <clears throat> That was very similar um, when I came uh, to the gym in, uh, in Kfar Yassif, which is uh, an Arab gym. Um, the population, I think, uh, maybe 40, 50% Muslims, the rest is Christians, Christian Arabs. Um, <clears throat> and it was a similar, similar, similar um, <clears throat> kind of a situation. They all stopped. They, wanna, they, wa they all uh, want to take my head off. Um, but hey, in the Middle East, that's what you do. <laughs> Sometimes you have to fight. Um, I had a sparring partner. Um, first, they put me actually sparring, and uh, the, they matched me with some kid, and uh, the kid won. just jumped at me, and uh, I managed to um, I managed to fight back, and uh, and I think I had uh, upper hand, and I got my um, I got my uh, kind of a welcome. Uh, I got maybe accepted and we start training with training and training and uh, and in the end um, over a couple of years of training together um, the 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 barrier you know the difference of you know I'm Jew they're Arabs kind of nobody cared anymore you know we all shared a common goal our common goal was, uh, you know, they wanted to succeed in boxing. I wanted to succeed in boxing. And, uh, we're not fighting each other. We was fighting someone else. Um, <clears throat> so fast forward, a little bit fast forward. Um, <clears throat> I continue. I trained. I woke up before school, uh, watching, um, um, always having my Rocky music in, uh, in my ears. And I was, uh, I was waking up uh, 4.30. 4.45 in the morning and I'll go for a run. Um, and thanks to the run, I would skip a school sometimes because I was get tired. <laughs> um, and um, I became three-time national champion. Um, and I started getting 
kind of a reputation um, and, and at least in Israeli boxing has, has pretty much don't mess with me. And it felt good in the beginning, you know. Um, in uh, 98, <clears throat> probably in the middle, not probably, it was summer, July 24th and uh, I lost my mom. My mom was a depressed person. She had a lot of issues with health and uh, I was almost 18 years old. And um, um, my mom, uh, she was in the hospital. She was admitted to hospital maybe 10, 10 12 times during seven year period. And, uh, and um, that's it, you know, after that, after losing my mom, I, uh, I, um, I, it's also very um, kind of an age in Israel, especially when you're almost 18, you know, once you're 18, you have to serve, you know. Um, I didn't mind to serve, to go to the army at all, um, but I wanted to continue boxing. So at that time, um, I don't know what's the laws now. Um, if you are um, kind of a qualified um, athlete, you know, if you are winning titles, national champion, um, they, they usually, giving you an option of training and going to the army, almost like going to school. So that was my goal. Um, the president of boxing, uh, Israel, uh, the president of, of boxing in Israel uh, gave me all sorts of diplomas and letter of recommendation. And uh, I came to, uh, to, um, to, the, to the military office, um, and uh, I gave all my papers, a stack of papers to everything, even including the articles from several newspapers. And uh, he just, out of, out of respect, I think, he just looked at them uh, out of just, just flipped them a couple seconds, maybe 10 seconds. And, uh, and he said, he looked at me, he put his hand on my shoulder and he says, you know, Yuri, after three years, do whatever you want. <laughs> um, and uh, if you guys um, been following sports and you've done sports and, and you continue doing sports, you're aware that, that if you wanna achieve certain uh, results, um, um, three years, it's a big, big break. Usually people don't come back after three years. Um, so um, I came home, um, my dad came from work and, uh, and, um, and I told him, you know that, I wanna try my best. I wanna go to the United States and I wanna try my best at, at my goal, at my dream. And if I, don't, if I don't make it, I'll just come back, you know? Um, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna, have this uh, back thought in my head, um, always bothering me and nudging me that I, at least I should have tried. I didn't want it to be years later and said, oh, I should have tried. I should have tried this. I should have tried. No, you know what? The time is now. And my dad literally puts his hand on my shoulder and it took him the same amount of time as this uh, officer's and military and he just gave me 10 seconds like in 10 seconds like you know Yuri I'll uh I'll give you a ticket okay <laughs> uh, oops sorry I don't know what's going on with my zoom here um sorry yeah and uh he just got my ticket um I um I think by miracle I I was able to get a tourist visa and I came uh, to New York and I start working on my uh, American dream. You know, um, I, I heard about the American dream uh, back in Soviet Union, um, believe it or not. I did not know what it is. It sounded very good and sounded very promising. And in Israel, I heard American dream as well. Um, <laughs> Not being sarcastic, actually, um, but my American dream is, um, is it was like this: um, the second day being in the United States, I already find a job in garment district here in uh, Manhattan, and uh, um, 
my uh, my work was from 8:30 to 6 to 6 <clears throat> and uh, it was kind of a physical labor and after that after 8 hours or 8 and a half hours of working i uh, i i uh, i had to really work on my american dream because american dream was your dream not working in the garment district and uh, i had to travel i had to actually what I used to do, um, my first job was in Manhattan Garment District. It's around 38th Street and 7th Avenue. And I used to run through Manhattan all the way to Brooklyn Bridge and, uh, and go straight to the Gleason Gym. Gleason Gym is uh, world, probably one of the most famous boxing gyms in, in the United States. And uh, there I used to train. Um, our our uh, the owner of Gleason Gym, Bruce Silverglade, uh, just turned seventy five. Um, uh, is a true true mensch, you know. Um, I did not have money, just like all other immigrant kids. Um, and um, I remember I uh, I came to him and I asked him if I could pay him the next month. Uh, he says, you know, Yuri, I'm gonna roll you into this program give a kid a dream and uh and and come here for free that's it that was one of the first thing in my life um uh, that was actually free <laughs> um you have to imagine imagine the, the the happiness of when you want to do something and it's actually free do it you just need to have passion and wants desire um and that was uh, amazing um a little bit um forward um that was uh kind of a groundhog day uh, scenario when i i wake up every morning same same time i go to work i go to the gym back home sleep again repeat re sleep repeat and uh, it was start getting um, exhausting, you know, exhausting, um, not so much as mentally, but it's also emotionally um, and maybe in some, some degree spiritual, spiritually. Um, uh, maybe three times I came very close um, of, 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 you know, throwing my hands and I was like, okay, you know what, I'm done. I try my best, there's no way. Uh, there's no way I'll, I'll, I'll make it, you know, um, watching American fighters, you know, um, they're so good and so inspirational. Um, I have a friend, a very close friend of mine, uh, he's a guitar player. And um, he was telling me when uh, Eddie Van Halen died uh, from uh, Van Halen, <laughs> Van Halen band, um, when he died, um, he was telling me a story when he went to, um, to, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit off the topic, but uh, I think it's, it's, it's important. <laughs> um, he told me that um, he'd seen the concert of Eddie Van Halen and uh, he'd seen him play. And when he was walking home, he says he was so inspired. And at the same time, he wanted to quit playing uh, guitar because there's no way he will be as good or near as good as Eddie Van Halen. And, when I came to United States, um, I've seen so many boxers. Um, in Israel, I've seen only two boxers that I that they showed briefly uh, on CNN. Um, it was Mike Tyson and Oscar De La Hoya. That's it. But when I came here, I started seeing the merit, the amount of boxers, the the talents, like Floyd Mayweather, for example. Um, and it was very discouraging. It was very discouraging to see someone like, there's no way, no way I'll be that. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to be achieving my dream because they are so good. Um, um, but I always kind of like, you know what? I'm not going to make this decision now. Uh, let me see tomorrow morning. Maybe I'll feel, feel better. Um, and um, in the morning, I'll wake up maybe more rested and I feel a little bit more enthusiastic and, and uh, I'll continue boxing. 
And at that time, uh, being spiritually, physically, mentally trained, uh, a friend of mine suggested uh, find maybe a spirituality. Spirituality, look at George Foreman. George Foreman, the oldest boxing, uh, he became the oldest uh, heavyweight boxer to, second, uh, to become a second time world champion at age 45. And uh, it was interesting because um, when I was uh, having a, a, a training camp in Big Bear, California, and I was in uh, JFK uh, International Airport and I was, I was going to the bookstore and one of the first book I've seen, it was George Foreman book. So I started reading and it was nothing about boxing. It was a little bit disappointing, uh, but it was a lot about spirituality. How much of his, his Christian and how much his spirituality helped him to achieve um, a... Um, an important curveballs, so to speak, um, or stumbling blocks that was on his path to achieve his, uh, um, to become a world champion. And it was very interesting. Um, after that, I decided, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a shot. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of, with the term, it's called uh, rabbi phobia. Um, I have a back backstory for that, but I I was a little bit kind of uh, nervous around rabbis, especially you know they were all black, big beard, big big uh, beards, um, and uh, I did not want to, you know I thought that you know Judaism is is, is whatever spirituality is is not for it's not for kids and it's not for athletes. Um, and boy, I was wrong, you know, um, I, I find, uh, at that time, I find um, wherever I was living, um, a Chabad rabbi, uh, the funny story of Chabad, <laughs> it's a joke, but uh, one of the smartest people, smartest rabbis, uh, uh, Jonathan Sachs, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, Zichrono uh, Lebracha, he was, uh, once I heard him speak in the, in the he was saying, he was saying, he opened, he opened the speech with a joke. It says, if you get lost and your battery and your phone is died, start singing Chabad Negan. Somebody gonna hear you. Some Chabad rabbi gonna hear you and will save you. Um, it was funny. Um, so I was living in Brooklyn and there was no shortage of rabbis, especially Chabad rabbis. Um, and uh, I came to the class, first class. I gave myself, a kind of an ultimatum. Uh, I'm going to sit for 120 minutes. It's two hours class. Um, and if I don't like, if I don't see it beneficial, I'm just going to walk away. Uh, that's at least I'm going to tell myself I tried. And it was interesting. Um, this rabbi um, starts with boxing story, you know, um, and it was kind of interesting. It's, right away got my attention um i start talking uh, and bringing parallel between two boxers in the ring versus you know our lives um and uh, how much uh, jewish spirituality of Judy, spirituality of judaism help us to give this inner strength and uh, to get on our uh, on our feet and continue fighting um and that was something got my attention. And I thought that is, I uh, was not a spiritual person, um, but I thought that was some kind of a sign from, uh, from the heavens. Um, for the rest of 115 minutes of the class, I didn't understand nothing. Um, and, uh, but I was still coming. I was still coming to the class and eventually I start kind of uh, learning a little bit more and more. Um, you guys are aware of this book, uh, Chabad, reading uh, the book, uh, it's called Tanya, and uh, it's written by Alter Rebbe. Um, and uh, it was interesting because Tanya is such a, <laughs> it's a joke. It's a, what I'm going to tell you, it's a joke. But from my perspective at that time, it was kind of, now I'm looking back, it's kind of funny because Tanya is a female name. Female name, uh, it's, a, it's a name of a female, right? Like Tatiana, Tanya. And I was always 
sitting for the, the next probably five classes. And I was fascinated, like, wow, Judaism is way more progressive than I thought. They, they having like a, the, the, the main book that they always teach in classes is from a book written by Tanya, you know? By, and I was wondering, what is this? <laughs> um, uh, who is she? But anyway, uh, to my amazement, I felt really stupid uh, to find out that it was actually nothing to do with, <laughs> with female name. Um, anyway, uh, jokes aside. Um, um, so I turned professional. I win the Golden Gloves. I turned professional. I started getting a little bit notoriety in uh, New York, Tri-State area. Um, and slowly started climbing, uh, climbing uh, on the on the on the on this professional, uh, being a professional fighter. This ladder. Um, I started. I remember I started as a turn professional. I was ranked three thousand something in the world, uh, which is being pretty much nobody. And um, um, and then uh, and then you know. Victory after victory, uh, step by step, I uh, I started uh, uh, get, becoming a contender. You know, I remember the day when uh, I became uh, I was ranked top top ten, top ten in the world. You know, it's a big thing, and I was already at back then telling myself, okay, if uh, if I'm even if I'm gonna lose, even if I'm like that's it, at least I'm gonna tell my dad my friends that that uh, that it, I made it top 10. It's like nobody from Israel being in top 10, you know. Um, and, uh, and then became top five. And then I had a uh, at the crack of the title, um, which is, I was already uh, cloud nine and uh, almost telling myself like, that's it, I'm done, I, I'm, I'm good. I'm just with that, I'm already good. Um, um, and that's it, I became a uh, contender number one. And the fight was in uh, November 14th. Um, thank you, uh, David Kratz for reminding me the date, November 14th, <laughs> 2009. Um, um, it's it's um it's interesting. Um, you've seen probably all uh, sport events. You probably have seen all boxing events. Um, you know when you watch when you sit in the couch and you watch boxers. Uh, sometimes, <clears throat> whether it's HBO or Showtime or big network, they going <clears throat> they showing um, uh, they going to the locker room. Um, with the camera to the fighter so to kind of to show the audience the televised audience you know what's what's going on like for example they're getting ready the fighter is doing shadow boxing or the trainer is tapping his uh taping his hands you know uh but something is missing you know you guys seen that okay there's a fighter there's a kind of a gladiator he's getting ready but in the same time <clears throat> Let me introduce you uh, uh, to kind of a what fighter goes through. You know, uh, we all focus. We're all getting, we focused on our goal, on the victor and the opponent. Make sure that we are going to be better than uh, or smarter in the ring. But the emotional havoc that goes in inside here is it's hard to it's hard to describe. You know, it's you experience experience um, being very excitement, the very strong experience of excitement, and then the same time fear. Um, you have, you wanna go, like you wanna start now, and then the same time, um, scary, it, it is scary. And uh, I've been told throughout the years, if you're not scared before the fight, then you're either stupid <laughs> or you're gonna get really hurt. Um, it's been told by numerous fighters, uh, big, big fighters. Um, and I knew that it's, it's okay to be scared. Um, um, a friend of mine was fighting undercard 
um, I was a co-main event. I was fighting uh, co-main event. It's been like right, right before the main event. So it was my fight was televised, and uh, and uh, my friend, Israeli friend, was fighting uh, three or four fights before me. And we have a monitors. We see in our locker room. We see the progression of uh, what kind of fight it is, and etc. And uh, and as I'm getting ready, my friend going to the rink, and uh, he started okay first round, and then he got knocked out cold. And when I'm saying cold, it's like uh, getting knocked out, lights out, you know. Um, um, for a while, for like almost half a minute. And it was very scary to see because I know I'm a good friend of mine and he's getting knocked out. And uh, if you guys, um, I'm sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> Let me put that on, do not disturb. Um, so locker rooms also uh, kind of uh, almost adjacent to the arena for obvious reasons. and. Uh, and when my friend gets knocked out, um, you hear the thunderous uh, noise, the noise of thousands of people, fans, just scream, whoa. And they uh, stomping the feet and they screaming all sorts of profanities. Um, and it's all adds to the burning fuel, the burning fire that is in your chest. And at the same time, um, you know, since you have a fire in your chest, your head is right above and it's getting roasted sometimes by this fire. <laughs> so if you're not controlling that, uh, you're gonna get, you're gonna, you're gonna roast yourself to, to a very unrecognizable uh, um, uh, condition. <laughs> um, so I'm sitting in the locker room, um, trying to collect my strength, trying to collect my my mental uh, prowess and um, and i was thinking you know thinking and sitting and my trainer joe greer um is a very spiritual man he's not jewish but he's my role model um and he's always praying always praying doesn't matter what religion he's always bringing god into everything in his life um and um he prays and and I'm slowly, you know, uttering my prayers. I'm always going to the ring, uh, to the locker room, always having my book of Tehillim with me, just in case, you never know. Um, and I was sitting at that time, and uh, I remember I was thinking like this thoughts, this lingering thoughts. And uh, you know what? Uh, you believe in angels, don't believe in angels, whatever. You know, you could be Jewish, but not necessarily spiritual. And, and I remember this lingering thought uh, as I'm sitting, already a lot, already wrapped, already had my gloves on. Um, and I remember before I left the United States, um, I went for the first time being in Israel. Um, I was in Israel eight years. And for the first time I went to Jerusalem. And uh, for obvious reason, I need the visa. <laughs> and uh, so the, the consulate was in Jerusalem. And I remember I came there very early and uh, I decided to do a little bit of tourism. I wanted to see what it is Jerusalem is all about. What is, why is it people make songs about the city? Um, and I went, I went there, you know, I went to see, it was not very close. And it was fascinating, you know, fascinating, uh, the spirituality. Even if you are uh, immune to spirituality, it's going to penetrate you at some, at some point if you spend uh, long, long enough, enough time over there. And um, I remember um, as I came to uh, the Welling Wall, uh, the Western Wall, and, uh, and I noticed people, you know, praying, and I noticed this peculiar thing that I never seen before. People writing this little pidyon uh, nefesh, this little uh, little pieces of papers, and they stick into the wall. And I was like, "That's odd." And I'm asking the bystander, uh, some Jew, "What it is? What is that?" And I say, "Write your you write your wishes, 
and Hashem will take care of it. And I'm like, is that cost money? I say, no, it's free. <laughs> um, which, is, which is kind of a, being an immigrant, free is like a magic word. So I did that. I, uh, I wrote, I wrote, I want to be a world champion. All right. Um, and, and I asked Hashem uh, for guidance. And, uh, and that's, and that's um, something that was valuable for me. And um, so a uh, little bit more than 10 years straight, uh, fast forward, I'm sitting in this uh, uh, MGM Grand in Las Vegas in the locker room and thinking just exactly about that thought. I never thought about that, um, that, um, that uh, what I've done, like this ex actually experience in Jordan, never thought about it. Because when you come to the United States, you know, you still have to work right away, pay bills and train. And, and at that moment, I remember thinking that for the first time since I was in, uh, since I was in uh, the United States. And it's given me, uh, I realized that to me, I told myself that um, tonight is the night. Tonight is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become a world champion. It's given me, um, <clears throat> weirdly, it's given me calm. I became more calmer. And it gave me a lot of power, a lot of strength. I felt strong. And, um, and as I was thinking that, the commissioner or commissioner of Las Vegas comes in and says, Foreman, five minutes, you out. Um, and um, I started making my uh, ring entrance music, uh, ring entrance with my music. Um, and uh, walking towards towards the ring, it's uh, it's interesting feeling. Any every single time you're making this walk, um, you see your your the people. Uh, I saw some Israeli flags. Somebody screaming, "I'm Israel!" Hi. <laughs> um, I was a contender. I was fighting um, um, a world champion. It was a three-time world champion, Daniel Santos. Um, as we all get sometimes a um, um, little bit, um, when we use social media, I would say a little bit excessively. So I use that excessively a little bit uh, a week before, uh, a couple of days before actually, before the fight. I just checked it out. I just wanted to check what the critics, the boxing critics gonna say, uh, What's the prediction about my fight versus Daniel Santos, my fight with Daniel Santos? And they all agreed one in unison that it's going to be a short night for, for Daniel, Daniel Santos. You're going to knock your reformer from three to five rounds. You know, that was very chilling. It was very scary. Um, um, if you decide to fight anytime soon, okay, and uh, don't try to Google <laughs> what's going to be because. Uh, it was very stupid on my part. Um, it reminds me, reminds me um, over over the time. It always reminds me of um, the, the the parsha in, in the Torah uh, when the spies going to to spy the land for forty days and then they come back with the with the evil report and uh, it's not very evil actually. They all what they say is is how they felt. They felt that they will never win and they will die. That's, there was nothing evil about it. They just expressed their natural, natural fears, you know. But when you express your natural fears, and if you believe in your fears, if you believe that you are going to lose, there's no victory in that. Um, if you're going to play a poker game, <laughs> Um, you're gonna believe that that uh, you are gonna lose. You're gonna lose. You know, probably ninety percent out of hundred or ninety nine percent out of hundred, whatever it is. Uh, in boxing, in sports in general, same thing. Uh, you have to believe. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many people love you. How many people are gonna be stand behind you, supporting you. If you don't believe in yourself, 
it's it's uh, it's Donsky. Um, it's 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 uh, it's a it's a it's a big fat dot next to your name, <laughs> um, and um, yeah. So walking towards the rink uh, as a contender, I have to make my way to the rink first. The champion comes after me, and champion uh, is 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 a knockout artist. He had probably more knockouts than fights. Then I had more fights. Um, and uh, it was intimidating, you know, intimidating. And uh, he gained uh, close to 20 pounds. He gained actually 19 pounds after the weigh-in. And uh, very weird, you know, like when you're a professional fighter, the, the, the weight, my weight, for example, the junior middleweight. So I have to be 154 pounds. And the official weigh-in is uh, 25, 26 hours before the fight. So we have time to rehydrate food, you know, and eat and stuff like that. Um, um, I made my weight 154. He made his weight 154 um, on HBO. The fight was televised on HBO. And they ask you to do the unofficial weigh-in. So I hydrate myself for about five, five pounds. So I was 159 um during the 25 uh, hours 26 hours and uh, daniel santos uh, hydrated himself 19 pounds you know he was 173 pounds so i remember one day introducing him and they're removing his robe and he is all muscles and huge and completely different person uh, different weight category and uh, and at that moment i remember as soon as they remove his robe, my coach, uh, Joe Greer, looks at me and whisper in my ears and says, he is heavy. He is looking for a short, for a short night. He looking to get you in a corner and just club you till you're knocked out. So we, what we're going to do is the first half of the run, half of the fight, which is six rounds, first half, Six rounds, you're going to be moving. You're going to be moving beautifully. You're going to be like Muhammad Ali, uh, dancing around him, circling around him, and sticking that jab. And the second half, second half, that's when you're going to start bringing the fire towards him. Everything that all he said that in, in literally 10 minutes, uh, 10 seconds, um, that we change our game plan right away. And uh, that's what I started doing. Um, I start, uh, as my trainer, Joe Bruce said, uh, Daniel Santos just wanted to get this Jew boy, uh, uh, send him back to whatever camp, Brooklyn. And, uh, and- Lonnie, that's what? enough. Lonnie, no, no more. Okay. So, uh, so um, uh, I, started, uh, I started doing what I do, being boxer. Uh, being smart in the ring. Uh, I was telling them uh, my style is more of a Jewish style. You know, the Jewish style is to hit and not to get hit. You know, it might be boring for some people, you know, uh, but uh, for usually it's boring for people who wants to see a, uh, a kind of a, a bloodbath when two fighters uh, standing in the middle and punching each other. Um, Till um, they are unrecognizable, um, and for me, boxing is boxing always been known as an art of defense. It's not an art of offense, art of defense. And for me, it's it's that's how Muhammad Ali used to fight, Sugar Ray Robinson, all of them. They are boxers, and uh, so that's what I was start doing. And then round by round, I was winning. I was winning rounds and rounds and rounds. I dropped him a couple of times, twice, I think. Um, and in the end, um, I became world champion. I became world champion and uh, becoming also um, uh, first Israeli world champion was, was uh, you know, it's a little history. Uh, for me, it was a big achievement. Um, and uh, that was it, really. Um, that's, that's, that was... 2009, you know, uh, almost 11 years forward, 12 years, <laughs> almost 12 years now. Uh, 
still here. Um, usually people who give speeches, uh, usually people who are uh, ex-politician, ex-athletes, ex, I don't know, something, ex something. I'm still on, uh, I'm still on, uh, on the path of, matter of fact, it's good timing with this, uh, um, my talk. Um, spoke with my wife today and uh, um, uh, the, made my decision today that I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna continue fighting. Um, um, and that's, and that's, um, and that's, for now it's final, you know? Um, even though I'm 41, 41, when I was 20, 22, 23, I used to call people 41 old farts. <laughs> so, so now I am finally, <laughs> finally went to that category <laughs> when I am myself uh, um, in that category. Uh, and since seeing some of your faces already, uh, you're in that category as well. So thank you for having me. <laughs> so, but um, over, over the years, um, my wife Shoshana and, and I, we are uh, vegans and um, I've been vegan almost four years. I've been vegetarian before that. Um, and, uh, and I must say, I never felt better. It's not a vegan podcast. I know it's not vegan talk. Um, by, but I highly uh, recommend because I tell all my friends, once in a while, just try to give, like, give yourself a meatless Monday, a meatless Tuesday, whatever, you know. As, as uh, Judaism, concerns um sages were all eating meat but they were reserving that uh meat eating uh for shabbat you know so throughout a lot of them and great great uh, kabbalists and sages were vegetarian technically uh maybe vegetarian six days six days a week and then seven day they would eat meat um, and as being an athlete, um, I'm training in a gym where there's a lot of 20 year olds, 18 year olds, and way younger than me, and they cannot keep up with me. Um, and I'm being also very competitive. Um, I'm very competitive with myself and with others. And, uh, and I feel uh, a great boost of energy and recovery as well. Um, so I spoke already probably for uh, 50 minutes. So I'm gonna conclude with before, if there's gonna be questions, uh, follow your dreams. Um, being also um, very important is, is to be, uh, count your blessings, count your blessings. We can criticize anything. We can uh, bitch and moan about anything but being actually um, thankful, thankful is, it's a great energy. It's a great energy that you can actually start, not tomorrow, you can start now as I'm speaking. Being really, before going to bed, you can say something like, oh, Hashem, thank you, I'm healthy. Thank God my family is healthy. If I'm not healthy, my family is healthy. You know, um, and ask for strength and, uh, I'm not just going to tell you um, as, as rom romanticized or something uh, within those lines, but it's, it works. When you start believing in it, it works. When you believe in your, um, in your, in your own self uh, power and you are co-creator, Hashem is a creator, but you are co-creator. You create your own path, your own life, your own destiny. And with the strong faith, you can change fate. You know, whatever fate might be, you with your faith, you change the fate. Um, and on that, uh, all right. Thank you very much thank for you. your thank time. Thank you very for much. Listening so, and, um, so Yuri, we we have several questions for you. Okay. Uh, so, but before I <clears throat> read you the questions, when you are as a forty-one-year-old you would be the age of most people on this call's son. So if you're feeling old at 41, how do you think we feel? 
<laughs> you guys look good. I I don't know how you feel. I think we look good. good. That's all that matters. It's just Incredible. a number. So anyway, um, so got, got a lot of questions for you. What's your walk-in song? What's your theme song? Uh, you know, um, certain things goes, uh, you kind of absorb uh, what has always been played on my uh, kids, for example, they listen, they tend to listen uh, what been uh, when they were growing up, uh, whatever their parents was putting kind of music. My dad was always in rock, he's a rock guy, and rock was always in our radio, always in uh, cassettes, then CDs, now MP3s. Um, and coming out with so many songs, uh, um, We Will Rock You, We Will uh, Another One Bites the Dust, and some heavier genres. Uh, you remember, you remember, um, you remember the band, the punk band, Ramones? Hey, Dave Kravitz was part of that band. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> yeah, uh, David Kravitz. Are you are you related to Lenny Kravitz? No, uh, no, no. I hear that all the time, but no. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know. you're not. He only says that because he's not getting royalties. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so um, we have a question for you. Do you ever tend? Do you ever intend to move back to Israel? Or are you I here? I, I, um, my, you know, I've been in the United States more all combined Russia when I was, I left Russia when I was 10. I lived in Israel for eight years, almost nine. I've been here already 21 years, um, 21 and a half actually. Um, so United States, definitely uh, it's, it's home. I have my my family, my wife, um, and uh, and I have a very strong connection to Israel. Um, obviously, I love Israel. Would you ever bring a fight to Israel? Would you ever fight over there? I would love to. I would love to. Yeah, I would love to. Yeah, it's it's like one of the fantasies that that I don't know. I should be start believing in them because it's kind of a fantasy. <laughs> Um, but it would be awesome to fight in Israel, um, to have a fight there. Oh my goodness. Um, it's like beyond, you know, somewhere in the, whatever, anywhere. Um, all right. So, um, I have a very, uh, this is a heavy question. So, so one of our listeners wants to know how you can reconcile being a rabbi with fighting for a living. And what do you think is harder to achieve? Spiritual strength or physical prowess? Hey. You know, um, so so if you want to grow a bicep, you know, bicep, you know, like you can, you can, you can, you know, lift, lift weights. You don't need, matter of fact, you don't need much brain for that, um, to to have a strong body. Um to put your body um in uh, harm's way, so to speak, because combats are other people also fighting, punching you back. And with that already involves uh, a lot of uh, a big gamut of, of other things. In, for example, uh, uh, how dealing with the fear, how to deal with injuries, how to deal with pain, um, and all, all these kind of uh, negative emotions, you know, I need to control. And that's when, uh, in my case, for example, Judaism was a very vital role uh, for me, I think, to even become a world champion. First, I needed to become uh, a observant and become uh, um, uh, learning spirituality and kind of, and kind of uh, integrate it into my boxing. And, and I learned a lot of things because in Judaism, overall, you open any kind of a spiritual books, you know, you have to be in control. You have to control your emotion. Fear is an emotion, you know. Um, when you receive pain, even though it's physical, but it's mentally, it's also, you know, nobody wants to have pain. Nobody wants to have pain. 
we don't want pain. Uh, and that's another issue that Judaism helped me to be more grounded, to be more, um, it's not just enough strong body, you need a strong mind and strong spirit to win the fight, you know? Uh, and that's, that's, that's important. So I would not say that what is more important or what's more difficult. Anybody, we're all different and we have uh, uh, all our plus and minuses, you know, uh, we can, I don't know, maybe I'll be, um, I'm okay in terms of sports, but for, for me, spirituality took a little bit longer than boxing, you know, so, but patience, patience is kind of a, it's a virtue, <laughs> I think, um, and it's important to kind of master it, you know. That's great. That's great. So someone wanted to point out that Joey Ramon was Jewish, just so you know. My son is only 22. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, well, he was uh, nice rubbing, rubbing it in. Nice rubbing in. By the way, you, you can be my kid. Do you have kids? Do you have kids? Yeah, Yuri? I do have, I do have uh, three kids from uh, first marriage. Uh, three, three boys, uh, age 11, 8, 5. Very nice, very nice. And so here's a good question, kind of talking about that. Do you, did you have a role model boxer that you, so was it Rocky, was it, was it a real boxer? Was it, you know, who, who, who did, or did you not? Did you just kind of do your own thing? You know, um, <clears throat> I would say um, growing up and I, I had very, uh, very limited amount of, uh, there was no internet, first of all, in my, when I was growing up. <laughs> There was no internet, there was no Google, um, and there was no videos really. And uh, Mike Tyson was a big impact for me. And Rocky movies was, it's kind of a little bit embarrassing to say that that Rocky, the no. fictional character, fictional character great. never had, that actually never been, you know, never been a boxer, uh, was actually a big, big drive for me. Uh, and, uh, but Mike Tyson, um, I remember first VHS. I I had uh, I borrowed from second hands uh, VHS, and I was watching this uh, forty five minute VHS like like it was a Bible for me. You know, I was re watching, yeah. re watching, and it was um, so. I would say that uh, um, that would be kind of a that's where I would get my strength. You know, um, also. Interestingly, uh, I was um, in the gym um, yesterday, uh, today, this morning, um, and uh, I was watching. Uh, I was watching uh, Manny Pacquiao. Uh, big, I'm following. I'm a big fan of Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is a Philippine fighter. For those who don't know, mm -hmm. he's an eight-time, he's an eight-time, yeah. eight different weight category champion, which is crazy. He's 42, almost 43 and fighting on a high, high level. And uh, for me, it was a kind of a motivational as well, you know, motivational to see many Pacquiao's fighting and he's fighting someone who is half his age almost, you know, and he still dominates things, you know, dominates uh, opponents, even though he just lost last Saturday. And for me, it was like, oh no, what I'm gonna do? <laughs> like I need role models. And interesting, I, um, I was hitting the back today and I came to the gym and I'm hitting the back, hitting the back and, and, you know, and I'm not listening music. I never listen to music when I train. And uh, so there's all my thoughts of concentrating on, uh, concentrating on, on, on the task, you know, the back, heavy back, you know, trying to learn my moves. <sighs> and this thought came to me when I'm hitting the back, like this eight rounds of hitting and hitting and hitting. And I'm like, Who's my role model? Like, what I'm gonna do now? <laughs> it's like, many Pacquiao just lost, and and I was like hitting, 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 and I just realized, um, how about me? <laughs> so I was like, I was like, I'm like, all right, you know what? If it's not many Pacquiao, then it's gonna be. Uh, I guess I'm gonna use myself as maybe I'll uh, push myself to the limits. And, and I, today as well, I was, as I was punching this, uh, this, uh, this heavy bag and this uh, all Hasidic story, 
came to me that I was learning a long, long time ago. Um, it was the story of Zusha from Anipol, from Ukraine, you know, and it was a story, like a short story, as, as, um, as um, when I die, and when I see Hashem standing in front of me, Hashem not going to ask me, Zusha, why did you become like Moses? Why did you become like uh, Prophet Elijah, you know, Elijah, you know, um, why did you do what you, you know what, uh, Hashem going to ask me? And all Hasidim, yes, what are you going to ask you? He said, like, why don't you become the best version of yourself, you know? And that's perfect. Um, throughout the years, I always, since I was a kid, I was imitating Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, like that was my kind of a hero, you know? And once I uh, learned more about boxing, I realized that, that I'm not built like Mike Tyson. I'm not, I'm not having this big neck. I'm not having these huge hips and huge shoulders and... There's nothing me. I'm more like tall and lengthy, you know, like, and I realized that I cannot be Floyd Mayweather. I cannot be my uh, Manny Pacquiao. And that's as I'm hitting this back. I cannot be those great fighters, but I can make myself great if I'm going to concentrate on myself and my potential, potential this. And that's what I'm going to going to do, you know, and that's my plan. Sorry for uh, no, long, no, that's long, that's great. We love it. We long, have a long, long answer. No, no, no. That was a great answer. And we're you know we're running over, but this is fascinating. Um, so just a few more questions. Sure. And by the way, so we have a, a a convention. We didn't have it last this year because of COVID, but we do have a convention every other year, and we've had it in Philadelphia, and we might have it again in Philadelphia. And if we do, we're going to have Dave Kravitz running up the stairs pretending to <laughs> you, and he's going to be sure, Rocky. Yeah. So yeah, there. Oh yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, wait, 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 wait. I can wait. see that make happening. Sure, make sure David, when he's going to run, he need a big, nice shake of eight eggs, raw eggs, <laughs> and then he runs. Okay. Yeah. Th thanks, thanks, Rabbi. There you go. So uh, one one question: What's the meaning of the shirt you're wearing? Oh, uh, this is my logo. This is my logo, and uh, clearly for Americans, you already realize that this is Cyrillic, <laughs> and it says actually Brooklyn. Um, oh, that's great! <laughs> and uh, and that's you know, uh, Jewish star with a lion in it. I do have my own explanation for a lion uh, uh, because it's kind of a sounds a little how you say uh, neo neo -frum, neo -frum. That's the word, neofrum. Yes, uh, I think it is neofrum. It's a, it's a kind of a, it's a kind of a, a yin and yang, right? But we have our Jewish star, you know, so three, two triangles, and it's kind of a balance, perfect balance between, between if in yin yang is feminine and masculine, and Judaism is would be physical and, and spiritual, you know, because we uh, recognize that spirit, the physical is both consist of the feminine and and uh, masculine, but definitely there's more battle between the spiritual and the animalistic. And to achieve the balance, you need to be acting like a lion, you know? You need to have the strength of a lion, uh, not the strength, physical strength, uh, more of a mental strength. And uh, so a lion is for that reason. It's, you need to always be lion. Maybe we not so healthy maybe we uh, god forbid you know and uh, maybe we are not 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 running eight miles a day or whatever but uh, mentally we can be alliance you know we can be uh, big big and so gonna, we can show uh, prowess not not masculine prowess but but mental prowess got it that's what so, we learn in uh, during the holocaust stories of holocaust you know so we have one more question and then we'll yes. wrap up. So, so you have Smicha, you're a, a rabbi. Um, and uh, the, the question is kind of twofold. So have you ever had a conflict being Shomer Shabbos and observing the holidays, like some of our baseball, potential baseball and basketball players are having this as a big issue now because we have a few uh, from uh, all stars that you know are trying to figure it all out. Um, and then the second part of the question is, do you have plans to use your rabbinical degree uh, down the road? So I'll let you do that and then we'll wrap up. Okay. Um, so in, in, in boxing, uh, usually the biggest fights are Saturday night. 
As every we, as every Jew knows, uh, Saturday night after sundown, we are kind of a uh, okay to do anything we want. So of of course, I mean anything we want uh, within the within the legal contest <laughs> context. Uh, um, so during during the holidays, especially season holidays upon us, actually. Um, uh, it's a little bit hard, yeah. I would miss a couple of days in the gym, you know. Um, but usually, after after the sundown, I, I'm, I'm okay. And usually, biggest fights are. Um, I think you know what the smarter answer is is uh, with the good planning, planning with people who likes to plan stuff. I, me personally, I don't like to plan, but when it comes to fighting, I have to plan because I forced to plan. Uh, you can you can do anything you want, you know, uh, you can find, find your, if you want to really do, you continue or fighting or playing basketball, you have to be under, under, after uh, sundown. Uh, that would be just the uh, things. Um, in second question of uh, um, rabbinical, um, rabbinical, uh, rabbinical, uh, uh, pursuing my career um um i need a good name for that first uh probably it could be a black eye synagogue or something um <laughs> you know what um i like talking to people i like to spread judaism yiddish kite um i train also in crown heights twice a week a group of jewish people and so we make it not just physical, we also make it spiritual. So I like doing, I like to um, influence, uh, not influence, uh, bad word. Influence became a bad word now these days. Uh, um, a younger generation, you know, I, because when I was growing up, I thought that uh, you have to choose one. Either you be religious or you be a guitar player or an actor or a player or, or athlete, you know. But Judaism is, is very combining the both. Judaism is one of this spirituality, those religions where you cannot achieve greatness, spiritual greatness, without uh, paying attention to your physicality. Because if your physicality is shit, then uh, good luck uh, achieving any kind of a spiritual heights. And, 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 the, and the, as the saying goes, uh, a strong spirit is within a strong body. We have to have a good uh, attain to our needs, physical needs, in terms of we need to practice even a little bit, even 20 minutes a day, a little bit of walk, a little bit of stair master, a little bit of run, or a little bit of weights, you know. Because if you don't lose it, you if you you if you don't if you don't use don't it, you lose it. it. Yeah. That's it. So that's um, great. <clears throat> well, this was just absolutely inspirational, inspiring. Uh, just a couple of things. So, uh, really, a big yeshakoach to David Kravitz because David works tirelessly on getting us caliber, high caliber athletes such as yourself. This Thank was you, David. David. Uh, You're welcome. Yeah, great, great job, and really was a wonderful, wonderful story. Um, it's a good thing we record this, so that we can spread this throughout the organization. We are really, really appreciative. Very inspirational, right before the high holidays, which are by, only by the way, two two you, weeks. Yeah, you should um, you should have in your group also um, the misbehave corner. You know, so once a month I could make a visit and talk to the guys. Um, <laughs> it's a joke. <laughs> we'll invite him Sunday night. Anyway, uh, All right. David. Hey, da hey, Danny. Danny and David. Yes. Okay. yes. An update on prior uh, programs like this. If people have not heard, the coach of the Israeli baseball team, Haas, has stepped down, and Nate Fish is the new manager of the Israeli baseball team. Both we had him too. Well, <laughs> both who appeared on on this program, so to speak. So you're you're with celebrities now. You're you're you've made the, you've peaked. You can't do better than this. It's it. <laughs> David, you have any concluding words? Sure, absolutely. Yes, it's a couple of words. Um, so first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us to, for this program tonight, and especially to Rabbi Yori Foreman. Uh, we we have had many speakers, but not anybody is quite as inspirational as you. 
no way any anywhere as inspirational you as you have been. You've been absolutely fantastic, an uh, inspiration to us, the Jewish community. We are really, really proud of you, and um, I, I just want to thank you so much for being on this tonight. Your your talk was absolutely fantastic. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, if you guys coming to Philly, uh, there's a one one dude here, Harold Marcus is. Uh, He's here from Philly and he's uh, Israel Bonds. And maybe you guys communicate and uh, can make things rolling. <laughs> oh um, the right. final words, final words. Don't forget to uh, exercise a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit, uh, 20 minutes a day, that's it. Um, by the way, arguing with your wives, it does, it's not an accident. It's, it's not, it's not a, even, though, even, though, even though your heart rate goes as like you are running a sprint. Yeah, it's like the Stairmaster uh, that, that, every that's, day. That, that's yeah. It doesn't count. Um, and uh, spirituality is just like a muscles. You know, um, you are you reading, you're learning, and uh, your spiritual biceps getting uh, growing bigger and bigger. Right. Thank you, guys. All okay. right, Yuri. Thank you very much. So we will have right. David's, David's working very hard, and we have a few more things we're planning, we're putting on, onto the calendar. So stay tuned. And uh, thank you very much, everyone. Thank Tova. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We don't talk to you. Unbelievable, huh? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye bye now.